All vertebrate brains develop from three embryonic regions: forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain. By the fifth week of human embryonic development, five brain regions have formed from the three embryonic regions. The forebrain develops into telencephalon and diencephalon. The midbrain develops into mesencephalon, and the hindbrain develops into metencephalon and myelencephalon. During early childhood, telencephalon develops into cerebrum. Diencephalon develops into the thalamus, hypothalamus, and epithalamus. Mesencephalon develops into the midbrain. Metencephalon develops into pons and cerebellum, and finally, myelencephalon develops into medulla oblongata. The brainstem coordinates and conducts information between brain centers. It includes three parts. The midbrain contains centers for receive and integration of sensory information. The pons regulates breathing centers in the medulla. The medulla oblongata contains centers that control involuntary functions such as breathing, cardiovascular activity, swallowing, vomiting, and digestion. The core of the brainstem has a diffuse network of neurons called the reticular formation, which regulates the amount and type of information. Information that reaches the cerebral cortex and controls arousal and sleep. Pons and medulla also functions in coordinating large-scale movement and transfer of information between peripheral nervous system, midbrain, and forebrain. The cerebellum is important for coordination and error tracking during motor, perceptual, and cognitive functions. It is also involved in learning and remembering motor skills. The diencephalon includes three regions. The epithalamus includes the pineal gland, which secretes the hormone melatonin that plays a role in sleep cycles. The epithalamus also generates cerebral spinal fluid from blood. The thalamus is the main input center for sensory information to the cerebrum, and the main output center for motor information leaving the cerebrum. The hypothalamus regulates homeostasis and basic survival behaviors such as feeding, fighting, fleeing, and reproducing. The hypothalamus also regulates circadian rhythms such as the sleep-wake cycle. It contains a pair of suprachiasmatic nuclei, which functions as a biological clock. Biological clocks usually require external cues to remain synchronized with environmental cycles. The cerebrum has right and left cerebral hemispheres. Each cerebral hemisphere consists of a cerebral cortex, overlying white matter, and basal nuclei. The basal nuclei are important centers for planning and learning movement sequences. In humans, the cerebral cortex is the largest and most complex part of the brain. A thick band of axons called corpus callosum provides communication between the right and left cerebral cortices. Each side of the cerebral cortex has four lobes. The frontal lobe mainly functions in decision making, planning, and execution. The parietal lobe mainly functions in integrating sensory information. The occipital lobe functions in processing visual information. And the temporal lobe functions in processing auditory information. When a somatosensory receptor is triggered by touch, pain, pressure, or the position of muscles and limbs, it sends information up the spine to the midbrain, which integrates the sensory information, then to the thalamus, which relays sensory information to the cerebrum. In an area located at the front of parietal lobe, known as somatosensory cortex, the parietal lobe then integrates the sensory information and sends it to the frontal lobe, which helps plan actions and movement. The cerebral cortex may then generate motor commands that cause particular behaviors. These commands consist of action potential produced by neurons in the motor cortex, which lies at the rear of the frontal lobe. Studies of brain activity have mapped areas responsible for language and speech. Broca's area is responsible for forming speech, while Wernicke's area is responsible for comprehending language. Emotions are generated and experienced by the limbic system and other parts of the brain, including the sensory areas. The limbic system is a ring of structures around the brainstem that includes the amygdala, hippocampus, parts of the thalamus and hypothalamus, and olfactory bulb. The amygdala is located in the temporal lobe. And helps store an emotional experience as an emotional memory. Learning can occur when neurons make new connections or when the strength of the existing neural connection changes. Short-term memory is accessed via the hippocampus. Hippocampus also plays a role in forming long-term memory, which is stored in the cerebral cortex. Neuroplasticity describes the ability of the nervous system to be modified after birth. Changes can either strengthen or weaken signaling at synapse. Long-term potentiation, or LTP, refers to a lasting increase in the strength of synaptic transmission. 
LTP involves two types of glutamate receptors, each named for a molecule NMDA or AMPA that can be used to artificially activate that particular receptor. In a synapse prior to long-term potentiation, the NMDA glutamate receptors open in response to glutamate but are blocked by magnesium ion. For long-term potentiation to occur, there must be a high-frequency series of action potentials in the presynaptic neuron, which arrives at the synaptic terminal at the same time, depolarizing the postsynaptic membrane, causing the NMDA receptors to release magnesium ion and the unblocked receptors respond to glutamate by allowing an influx of sodium and calcium ions. The influx of calcium ion triggers the insertion of stored AMPA glutamate receptors in the postsynaptic membrane. In synapses that exhibit long-term potentiation, glutamate release activates AMPA receptors that trigger depolarization, which unblocks the NMDA receptors, and together the AMPA and NMDA receptors trigger postsynaptic potentials strong enough to initiate action potentials without input from other synapses. The result of long-term potentiation is a stable increase in the size of postsynaptic potentials at the synapse. It is thought to represent one of the fundamental processes by which memories are stored and learning takes place. Both genetic and environmental factors may contribute to diseases of the nervous system. About 1% of the world's population suffers from schizophrenia, which is characterized by hallucinations, delusions, blunted emotions, and other symptoms. Available treatments focus on brain pathways that use dopamine as a neurotransmitter. There are two broad forms of depressive illness. In major depressive disorder, patients have a persistent lack of interest or pleasure in most activities whereas bipolar disorder is characterized by manic and depressive phases. Treatments for depression include drugs such as Prozac and lithium. Some drugs are addictive because they increase activity of the brain's reward system. Drug addiction is characterized by compulsive consumption and an inability to control intake. Addictive drugs enhance the activity of the dopamine pathway. Opium and heroin decrease activity of the inhibitory neuron. Nicotine stimulates dopamine-releasing ventral tegmental area neuron, while cocaine and amphetamines block removal of dopamine. Alzheimer's disease is a mental deterioration characterized by confusion, memory loss, and other symptoms. It is caused by the formation of neurofibrillary tangles and amyloid plaques. Lastly, Parkinson's disease is a motor disorder characterized by muscle tremors, poor balance, a flexed posture, a shuffling gait, and other symptoms. Approaches used to manage the symptoms include brain surgery, deep brain stimulation, and a dopamine-related drug called L-DOPA, which crosses the blood-brain barrier, and within the brain, the enzyme DOPA decarboxylase converts the drug to dopamine, reducing the severity of Parkinson's disease symptoms.